Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So today I would like to give an introduction to Honoré de Balzac, who was a 19th century French realist novelist, most famous for his Comédie Humaine cycle of novels and short stories. Comédie Humaine is translated into English as human comedy. I have read three of his novels and one short story. But first, I want to give a very brief introduction to Balzac himself, uh, his place in French literary history, and just the human comedy cycle in general. So Balzac lived in the first half of the 19th century, and his human comedy cycle includes characters in each of the novels that then are recycled in future novels. So for example, we will be introduced to Eugène Rastignac, in Father Goriot, but then he will reappear as a side character in La Peau de Chagrin, which is translated as either The Skin of Sorrow or The Wild, a Wild Ass's Skin, two novels that I will be discussing in the second part of this video. So you have characters that are you know, the protagonists in one novel, but then they will reappear, reappear as uh, secondary characters in later novels. and. There seems to be over 91 works uh, in the human comedy, so there are so many works, but there are some novels that are more famous than others. He has also written novellas that constitute the human comedy. I mentioned that Balzac was a realist, and so realism was a literary movement in the 19th century that was like holding up a mirror to society. And indeed, that is what Balzac says that he's attempting to do in the preface to the human comedy, the avant-propos, as it's called. Um, in this preface, he says that like a scientist who categorizes different species, he wants to categorize different human types in the French society. And the society he's looking at is the post-Napoleonic one during the Restoration and the July Revolution in 1830. So in his novels, you see different aspects of French society being represented in one or two characters. And through those characters, like say one character, Eugène Rastignac in Father Goriot, you see the type of young man who grows up in the countryside and who wants to enter into Parisian society. That's just one example of the social types that Balzac depicts in his novels. Balzac, as a realist, becomes an influence on later naturalist writers like Emile Zola. Um, he admits that Balzac was a great influence on him, but Zola will go even further. He's more empirical in his approach to society, and also he thinks of his work as an experiment, um, whereas Balzac kind of has more of an idealist, he still has a little bit of an idealistic um, perspective to his works. He talks about how the monarchy and the church uh, are the two major um, binding factors in the society, something that he really values, whereas Zola um, is much more skeptical about religion. And Zola also tends to be even more pessimistic than Balzac. But Balzac is nonetheless seen as um, a proto-naturalist because of his descriptions of society and because he really thinks of himself as holding up a mirror to society. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me talk about some of the works that I have read by him. So the first of his works that I ever read was Father Goriot or Le Père Goriot. So this is the French edition and I will put an English edition in the corner for all of the French works I will be discussing. So in this work, we follow Eugène Rastignac in particular. Um, Eugène is a college student who is living on the top floor, actually in the attic of this, um, basically an apartment building. And the top floor is always rented out to people who are poorer and people who are wealthier live on the bottom floor. And he has a neighbor named whom everyone calls Father Goriot, who used to be on the bottom floors, but he's now Eugène's neighbor. And we come to learn more about Father Goriot, particularly about his two daughters, who 
have basically taken their father's money. And Goryeo is quite a selfless person in that he gives all of this money to his daughters. And Eugène becomes acquainted with these daughters. And this is what the novel is about. It's about these daughters of Father Goriot and Eugène's relationship with them and his desire to rise in the ranks and enter into Persian society because he's from the countryside. Um, and there's some politics involved as well. So this is a great place to begin. If you're interested in the human comedy cycle or any of Balzac's works, definitely begin with this work. This is, in fact, the, like I said, the first book that I ever read of his. I was in high school and I was taking one of those standardized exams, or at least I was practicing for one of the standardized exams in French. And one of the sample passages came from Père Goriot and it inspired me to read it the next summer. It's one of the first novels that I read to completion in French. It is a beautiful, beautiful work. You have to push through the descriptions, um, but the descriptions are also not just to be read literally, but they're also metaphorical because they really tell us something about the human condition. Um, they're more metaphorical in Balzac than they are, say, in Zola. The second novel that I read is La Recherche de l'Absolu, or The Quest of the Absolute. And this one follows Balthazar Claez, who is a scientist, or at least he wants to be a scientist. He's in search of this particular particle that will explain everything. And this was actually quite fashionable in the 19th century, where you would have a lot of scientists, mostly chemists, uh, who really believed that if they could find this one substance, that could explain everything, then the secret to life could be found and explained scientifically. So Balthazar Claez is inspired by some colleagues to um, run this laboratory in his household. And so he does all of these experiments that are kind of al al alchemical. And um, he has a daughter, Marguerite, and a wife who unfortunately don't benefit from Balthazar's experiments because they cost money. And so he starts selling all of the family heirlooms and basically just draining the family's fortunes through his quest for the absolute. And this is one of those novels that really looks at um, the scientific developments in the 19th century and the kind of people who are really drawn um, to these questions. Balzac was actually quite sympathetic to it, as he says in his preface. Um, he was following the discoveries of scientists like Cuvier and Buffon and Saint-Hilaire. Um, and really, he, in his own way, is also concerned about finding one principle that can explain everything. The final novel that I read by Balzac is La Peau de Chagrin, or um, The Skin of Sorrow. Sometimes it is translated as the wild ass's skin and it follows Raphael de Valentin who is a man who is very depressed at the beginning of the story he actually contemplates suicide he contemplates throwing himself into the Seine River but then he is distracted by this curiosity shop and in there he finds this magical skin and the skin you offers you, grants you wishes, but every time it grants you a wish, it reduces in length. And so once the skin is, well, non-existent, Raphael will die. And so we get to see what Raphael does with that. He does encounter Eugène as a secondary character this time. Um, he certainly wants to enter into high society again. Uh, and he recounts in the second half of the book the love he has for a particular woman named Fedora who is of high society. But that is my favorite of his novels. My favorite work by Balzac is actually Le Colonel Chabert, which is a novella. And it follows the Colonel Chabert, who is believed to be dead. And so his wife, thinking that she's now a widow, remarries. But it turns out he's not dead. He had fought in the Battle of Elo during the Napoleonic Wars he lost. I mean, the, the, they lost. Um, and then during the restoration, 
he now wants to enter back into society and say, hey, I'm living. But it's not as easy as he thinks. This is probably the most heartbreaking of all of the works that I've discussed so far. But it is so brilliant in its imagery and in its commentary about the transition between the Napoleonic era and the Restoration. And just what that did to French society and, and thinking about wealth and power and um, war and what it means to be a hero. There's just so much in this novella that I highly, highly recommend Colonel Chabert. So that is my very brief introduction to Balzac. Let me know if you've read any of these works or any other work by Balzac. I hope you guys all have a great weekend and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.